There are pivotal moments in the history of nations, uh, moments when you clearly see the catastrophic future of a country. And such a moment occurred yesterday when the Conservative uh, government of Great Britain removed the philosopher Sir Roger Scruton from his post as a government advisor on architecture. And the, the, the sacking of Roger Scruton came after he was interviewed by left-wing extremist George Eaton, the deputy editor of the fake news New Statesman magazine, who deliberately and dishonestly edited Scruton's words and the context in which he said them uh, in order to portray Scruton as variously a homophobe, an Islamophobe, uh, an anti-Semite and an anti-Chinese uh, racist. Now this in itself is not much of a story, particularly if you're unaware of Roger Scruton. But what is important, what is a pivotal moment in the history of a nation, uh, has been the terrifying reaction of the entire mainstream media, which simply cut and pasted the New Statesman's manufactured lies, uh, and the reaction of the Conservative Party, which promptly shamed itself en masse as prominent members fell over themselves to denounce Roger Scruton as a a wicked racist beyond the conservative pale. And the problem here, though, is that the smears aimed at Roger Scruton are completely untrue. They are politically driven lies of a Stalinesque proportion, uh, engineered to portray up as down, black as white, and a wise, kind, gentle, decent man as a bigot. I'm not going to list all of the instances of lies, fake news and dishonesty proudly displayed by the shameless extremist George Eaton and the far-left New Statesman magazine because three articles have already been written exposing their blatant corruption which I've linked to uh, below this video and recommend that you read if you haven't done so already. Uh, all I will say is that two of them were written by Douglas Murray and Brendan O'Neill, uh, two proper journalists, two decent men who, unlike George Eaton and the New Statesman, believe in ethics, facts, honesty, morality uh, and uh, professionalism. Uh, what I do want to do, though, is talk about the mainstream media reaction. Take, take a look at these snapshots of news stories related to this issue. All of them repeated the lies of the New Statesman. Take a look at the headlines. Look at the accusations of Islamophobia and white supremacism written by ignorant, childlike, left-wing journalists and ushered into print by ignorant, childlike, left-wing editors. Not one, not one mainstream media news outlet sought to question the validity of this story. Uh, not the BBC, not the Times, not the Daily Telegraph, not the Sun, not Sky News, not one of them, not one. All of them are engaged in dishonest, politicised, propagandised, mass fake news, and they're happy to do so uh, either because they want to target a perceived right winger, or perhaps uh, even more shockingly because they are so ignorant that they're completely unaware of just who Roger Scruton is. And this ignorance extends to the Conservative Party as well. James Brokenshaw was the government minister tasked with sacking Roger Scruton, yet astonishingly this senior Conservative later admitted that he thought Scruton was just a wine critic rather than Britain's greatest living philosopher and defender of traditional conservatism. And this is akin to uh, popping down to your local golf club and discovering the club pro had never heard of Tiger Woods. It's so astonishing, it's so chilling, it's so terrifying, it is simply beyond words or comprehension. Theresa May was said to be appalled about Scruton's alleged Islamophobia and racism, which shows that she too has little knowledge of the man who over a 50-year period has written countless books and articles and established himself as the foremost traditional conservative in Britain. Sir Roger Scruton is an intellectual colossus compared to these people, a moral colossus, an ethical colossus, a humane colossus, yet these pygmies, these curs, these yapping pie dogs, these 
cowardly hyenas have encircled this moral giant and brought him down. In a scene reminiscent of C.S. Lewis's Narnia books, when the powerful, uh, proud Aslad is killed to the jubilation of the weak, stupid, cowardly, cloven-footed creatures who caper and exult in his sacrificial death agonies. Sir Roger Scruton is the bravest of men. He risked his life taking banned literature into communist Czechoslovakia in the 1980s. Sir Roger Scruton is the wisest of men. Reading his countless essays and books requires immense concentration and constant referrals to Google in order to fully absorb the words and classical references. Sir Roger Scruton is also the kindest and the gentlest of men and one of the funniest of men, yet such an astonishing man quite literally one in a million can be falsely labelled a bigot by the agenda-driven far-left extremist George Eaton, a man who worships Jeremy Corbyn, a genuine anti-Semitic communist with the stain of a hundred million murdered in his ideological name, and the entire mainstream media and the Conservative Party leadership without question immediately moves against Sir Roger Scruton. At the beginning of this video I said there are pivotal moments in the history of a nation and this really is one. What, what just happened proves that the hard left's march through the institutions is now complete. The media can blatantly lie en masse and the cultural Marxist pygmies leading the Conservative Party will immediately destroy a man whose entire life has been built around traditional conservatism. We've lost, I'm afraid. The hard left is now in control of everything. We can still make videos such as this, uh, for the time being at least. I'm on my final warning from YouTube and most of my videos have been taken down, but we've lost. This shameful, obscene, disgusting treatment by the entire British political and media class of Sir Roger Scruton is nothing less than the heel of the leftist boot grinding in our faces. And without a political revolution, a genuine political revolution, it will be grinding in our faces forever.